Hi, I'm Kendall with the Rawls Group. The old African proverb, it takes a village, illustrates the essential nature of a team approach to succession planning. Succession planning is a complex endeavor. As such, it requires leveraging the expertise of a diversity of backgrounds. Collaboration and different expert opinions provides a 360 degree approach, ensuring the possible, probable, and potential issues impacting your long-term vision are addressed. To provide insight into common questions received from business owners, we are leveraging the village of our valued strategic relationships. As you listen to this episode, you'll be able to immediately apply the key takeaways and you'll come back for more. Now we're going to focus on how can business owners retain or increase their sales to at least cover their cost? And any ideas you can share on how to create more points of revenue? COVID-19 hit us very suddenly and businesses were not ready to take, a, take on the economic shutdown. However, how you react now will determine how you come out of the other side of the pandemic. If you're in operations or getting ready to open back up, you'll need to cut as many redundant and unnecessary costs as you can. Flexibility is key to staying on top of the pandemic. For example, eliminate the non-essential marketing and increase your social media presence and contents. This is a great way to promote your business at little to no cost. Use, use the social media to communicate with your customers and hear thoughts on what matters to the consumers. Speak to your vendors, see if there are any opportunities for rebates or reduce costs in exchange for long-term relationship. The demand for the delivery service has increased significantly, but the fees on the third-party delivery services are also very high. You may want to create your own online ordering system and internal delivery system to reduce some of these costs. Finding other sources of revenues, revenue opportunities can play a critical factor. Many companies are introducing new products or modifying existing products uh, to be able to deliver to, to their customers. Some businesses are closing all of their brick and mortar locations and are moving towards kiosks and e-commerce concepts where customers can either pick up their products at the kiosk or have their products delivered to their doors. The gym and learning and development concepts are providing virtual and online classes, which seem to be working very well. They are also offering uh, free classes throughout the week to attract new customers. For quick service restaurants um, and normal sit-down restaurants, uh, introducing new product or promoting sale of products with high profit margin may help you stay profitable. You may also want to pre-sell some of the gift cards to strap your customers to stick to your services post-pandemic. Other highly interactive businesses such as nail or hair salons that have high level of customer interaction will need to improve on their safety and sanitation procedures. Many salons have face masks that cover their entire face and provide ample of time between reservations to limit the number of customer to customer interaction. Some businesses are offering online do-it-yourself classes that can turn into family bonding time during your sessions. Lastly, but most importantly, recognize that you're not alone. Speak to your franchisor, the other franchisees, and brainstorm together as a team. Share what works for you and listen to others with an open mind. There's no simple solution to all of this, but we can all work together to successfully overcome the pandemic. Those businesses that are able to change the way they operate, to have a restaurant that is able to operate on a street level outside with tables are able to survive. Those that are able to survive on delivery alone are able to survive by reducing their costs, by specifically addressing the foods that they need to provide or that they can provide that are, um, that are deliverable, that people want to buy on a delivery basis. Pizza places are doing fine. Uh, Asian restaurants are doing fine, but some, some kinds of restaurants can't survive in this environment. And that, that's what we've seen there. With respect to other types of clients, childcare and so on, a lot of those places are either closed or they are, um, they are substantially reduced in revenue. So they're trying to reduce their costs. The first thing we're gonna look at today is culture. What this year has brought us has a strong ability to stir our emotions internally, which will reflect outward in the things that we are involved with. A store manager needs to address store culture and recalibrate the thermostat to a we will thrive setting. 
Have powerful team meetings where you are not only heard, but felt. Engage in constructively purposeful one-on-ones with your managers and your client-facing service providers. Your focus is to empower and influence, and everyone should be on board to lead, follow, or get out of the way, right? Uh, the other uh, component we're going to look at is uh, business strategy. Buy inventory that makes sense for your market. Ensure that you can get healthy packs built into every car deal. Review F&I performance. This is a great time to reach out to your 20 group colleagues and chat about your current experiences to have an idea of what is realistic from the F&I department. Uh, sometimes we just need to back away and get a fresh pair of eyes outside of your circle because we can get very inundated and dazed with what's going on. For fixed ops, you'll need to shoot for 75% or better in uh, absorption rate. Service writers should have training that will help them quickly identify sales opportunities in the quick lane. Don't wait for maintenance contracts to call for appointments. The BDC should be making those calls based on customer estimated mileage that you can get from Carfax or just your uh, service writer tools. Uh, this is an easy one since there is literally no out-of-pocket cost to the, co the customer with an active maintenance contract. Your parts department should also be serving your community and have an internet sales platform that works in tandem with each other. And finally, your banking relationship should be a high priority. That relationship serves your customers, your sales desk, your floor plan. There is a lot of risk associated with that relationship if it's not valued. And I will also say that you always have a second, you should always have a second option and be aware of what the banking competitors do, are doing. I think at the core of this question is the is strategic planning. I said uh, whether you are uh, sitting around your table with a glass of wine thinking through options or whether you engage in a formal process um, with your key management team or an outside expert to go through it, this is strategic planning um, and it requires creativity. As an entrepreneur, you have been successful in creating a business, problem solving, jumping through hoops and doing whatever you needed to do to get things done. We're in that similar situation. Um, so first step is very simply go through what you're good at, what you're not good at, do a SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. Um, but but get, get to work on that process. Um, some clients I've seen actually have had record sales over the last couple months just through the drive-throughs, which leads to some of the questions to come, how do we enhance what we're already doing? Um, you know, should we look at delivery options for our customers? Um, I've seen some open parking lots with park benches, open up the parking lots with park benches and, and have people seated out there to create that normalcy of a sit down dinner, for example. But at the end of it, um, I think we look at leveraging technology uh, in order to limit physical exposure. Uh, what are we not doing right now in terms of, you know, delivery services or whatever that means to your particular business? Um, in order to create confidence um, and some sense of uh, normalcy for your customers. And additionally, I think it's been critical for uh, or my clients and, and many business owners to get involved in the community in any capacity. It doesn't matter if you're a burger joint who's going to try to make masks, but it's creating awareness that you are committed to that community in whatever the community needs um, and, and get those creative juices flowing. Thanks. Thank you to our strategic partners, The Village, for participating and sharing your perspective. Do you have a burning question you want to discuss with an expert? Feel free to submit it via the Ask an Expert link featured on the page. Continue to listen to this series now or come back later for more. Each question featured may want you to learn something new.